Well, we interrupt our regular programming to go live uh, right here in Tehran to the Foreign Ministry for a weekly press conference. Let's listen up. It was if to me a patience, so I would like to offer congratulations to the audience at the same time. I should also offer condolences and express our regret regarding the uh, passing away of Professor Mohammed Najad. I would also like to offer condolences to uh, the people engaged in the media during the week we're in it's also the anniversary of the uh, media martyrs uh, those which are martyred during the air crash so we'd also like to specifically offer condolences to the media reporters on that occasion Ms. Norazi, please go ahead Good greetings. Uh, the Foreign Ministry's stance regarding the recent comments of Wendy Sherman uh, regarding the sanctions and also the comments of the U.S. President regarding Iran and enrichment, if you could uh, let us know about the Foreign Minister's stance. And also the foreign and Western media have announced that 90 percent of the new sanctions law against Iran uh, have been, uh, have gone uh, uh, through the U.S. Congress in terms of finalization, what will happen to the Geneva deal? Well, you just asked three questions in the form of two. Now, I don't know which part of the U.S. Uh, Deputy Secretary of State you mean, but specifically regarding sanctions, the stances of the Islamic Republic of Iran when it comes to various aspects and the subject of sanctions. Uh, it's clear we have announced the sanctions are brutal and uh, during the negotiations based on the plan that the Islamic Republic of Iran has proposed a final step would be the lifting of all sanctions. They are unilateral, multilateral sanctions, also the UN Security Council sanctions. So on the base of the talks conducted and the, the, the resulting uh, step that would take joint steps, we think that there is a crack in the sanctions and it's going to fall apart. But when they announce uh, percentages for that, it, this is kind of, you know, attempts to create this atmosphere, this psychological air. Uh, around various issues. So we're hopeful that uh, for the final step to be taken, the issue of sanctions could be totally dealt with. To that end, the negotiating team of the Islamic Republic of Iran is fully determined to see the final step to be taken based on the removal of all the sanctions and to have a peaceful nuclear energy program considering enrichment and the objectives uh, uh, designed by the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now, he also asked, uh, about the comments of U.S. officials uh, that they have made in the past few days. Well, those comments and remarks made by U.S. authorities, we follow them very closely. On the sideline, the, mm, the domestic aspects uh, of issues in South America, that's what we're also watching. So what's clear for us is that there is this contradiction, this clash of interests that we feel is there. And in some ways, they're attempting to uh, have this uh, current path diverted. So the path that uh, we've taken out, of course, official, U.S. officials also uh, make irrelevant remarks. But maybe the uh, main point that is actually less heard of among the media is the acceptance of enrichment but among those uh, statements and remarks uh, uh, and that propaganda hype that were paid less attention to. Now, the, the comments that were made uh, talked about the inefficacy. Uh, they admitted the ineffectiveness of the sanctions. That's what the U.S. officials uh, admitted, and that during the sanctions period, Iran's progress and development did not stop. That means from a different dimension, if you just uh, uh, consider the uh, comments, you see that 
there was uh, somehow uh, admitting uh, the fact uh, of the facts on the ground in Iran. And this is demonstrative of the power and capability of the Iranian nation. And it indicates that Iran's progresses and advancements in various technological fields and science fields have happened despite all the sanctions and they will go on and that sanctions will have no effect whatsoever on the resolve of the Iranian scientists and youths. Their activities have not been harmed in any way. So this is the Islamic Republic of Iran in the course of the talks and the course of uh, the, the path that uh, it has adopted. There is full realization of the people's rights considered and all the potentialities and all the capacities, diplomatic capacities, will be used by means of uh, political channels and legal channels. The natural rights of the Iranian nation will be pursued. The main objective on this path is the very issue that uh, things should not be diverted to, uh, and the media should also be attentive. So this confidence building domestically should also be considered by the media. Mr. Rafa, go ahead. Greetings to you. Got two questions for you. During the trip that Mr. Ahmed Karzai had to Tehran, he had, the presidents of both countries came to agree that Iran and Afghanistan to sign a comprehensive friendship and cooperation agreement to embark on negotiations. If you could give us some details on this pact, please. And the second question regarding the interaction between the foreign ministry and the Islamic Consulate Assembly, the Iranian parliament. During the time when Mr. Zarif has uh, come to office, he, for more than 10 times he has met with parliamentarians, but yesterday there was, on Sunday, a number of parliamentarians have uh, called for a revision of uh, continuation activities by uh, Dr. Zarif. You could explain that a little bit. Uh, now, as for interaction with the Islamic Council of Assembly, Parliament, the Iranian Foreign Ministry as a part of the an organization within the government does believe in this uh, constructive interaction. So this is our understanding, and we are determined to have uh, constructive interaction with world countries. We need, in the first place, to have constructive cooperation and interaction domestically. So I think uh, you said 10 times there was, uh, if you also include today, it should be uh, 10 times that the foreign minister has met with MPs. So this is assessed in line with respecting for the rights of the parliamentarians and <clears throat> the assessments that they have had regarding uh, we have had regarding the function of the foreign minister. We think that this contract, this interaction should be there, uh, clear cut policies should be there, and the questions should be answered. That's what we take heed of. Regarding the future of cooperation and continuation of this process, we are optimistic and we are determined to say, to try to take steps uh, to remove any kind of misunderstanding uh, uh, as long as uh, it's related to uh, the working with the parliament. And we believe that through negotiations uh, uh, away from uh, controversies and disputes and in an expert atmosphere, in a specialized atmosphere, there will be a possibility of greater cooperation interaction in a more positive way. So uh, Dr. Zarif will also be uh, taking part in Parliament's uh, foreign policy commission for policy and national security policy, and he will be replying to the MP's questions. So hopefully this process of interaction and talks will be further going on in a more constructive way. You also uh, asked about the issue of Afghanistan and the um, uh, fraternity and a friendship pact uh, that, uh, that has been discussed. The presidents of the Islamic Republics of Iran and Afghanistan in a meeting that they had during Mr. Hamad Karzai's 
uh, visit, they came to an understanding to have this comprehensive friendship pact uh, concluded by the two nations, on the basis of which, uh, and also uh, because of uh, the determination of both presidents, the four ministers of both countries, are supposed to uh, do the expert work uh, for the preparation of uh, the context of this cultural, social, and uh, political uh, understanding. Hopefully, this comprehensive friendship pact uh, would work for long-term cooperation and comprehensive and all-sided cooperation to be put in place between the two uh, brotherly neighbor nations of Iran and Afghanistan to be able to cement and further boost uh, the two countries' relations and set the stage for further deepening of uh, cooperation. Well, we just started this and, uh, God willing, it will be put into operation in due time. Well, Shimon Peres has recently announced that uh, he's prepared to meet with uh, Mr. Rouhani and that Iran is not an enemy of that regime. What's Iran's stance regarding uh, uh, the, such comments by Zionists? Is this change in tone is because of the isolation of the Zionist regime after the, uh, the nuclear pact uh, with Iran? Also, also Mr. Obama has uh, talked to the Savan. Mm, uh, that is really forum and in which is said something about uh, the fact that secret talks between Tehran and Washington are ongoing between Tehran and Washington. Do you approve of this or not? Now, as for Mr. Uh, Obama's comments, we've already announced that no kind of secret negotiations are going on between the Islamic Republic of Iran and the United States of America. All uh, what's been uh, 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 dealt with in the talks have been within the nuclear negotiations with P5 plus one, so this is quite a clear but stance. Now, as for the other question, uh, there has been no change in the stances of the Islamic Republic of Iran and the viewpoint of the establishment regarding the Zionist regime. And that will not change. The Islamic Republic of Iran does not recognize the Zionist regime. Our stances uh, toward that regime, we, we look at, at them as a hegemonic and occupier regime that's also a fabricated uh, regime whose existence is based on fabrication and usurpation of Palestinian territories. So our stances are quite clear. We do not accord recognition to that regime. So uh, this propaganda that is being waged for to take this regime out of isolation, I should say, that this is totally uh, ineffective and futile. So they are trying to kind of uh, get this public uh, opinion of the region and the uh, Muslim regions to kind of affect the public opinion regarding Iran and its role in the region. So I expressly announced that the people in the region are absolutely vigilant. They know what the, what's happening and they won't be affected by this propaganda. So that this adoption of this uh, rhetoric and language that they, they have just adopted recently is um, ineffective. They want to get out of isolation. And we recommend that the world people still keep vigilant and watch carefully the moves made by the, by the Zionist regime and not be affected by uh, these deceptive uh, slogans that they are raising recently. Well, greetings. First, I want to ask about the details of Mr. Lavrov's visit to Tehran, what, what, uh, which officials is going to meet. And also, yeah, yes, last night, Mr. Vaidnishat uh, made certain comments and said that uh, there should be a time for the Geneva Agreement, the implementation. But, but when the inspectors of the IAEA came to Iran, as it was said by the, the National Security Council members, they said that 
the Geneva meeting has been put into operation. Actually, let me say, it's in the petition has already started. I just wanted you to elaborate on that. And then the IAEA is going to supervise Iran's commitments. Is there also going to be an organization to oversee the obligations and commitments by the Westerners regarding the Geneva Agreement? Well, the foreign 